Hey YouTube, it's Guy, and I'm coming at you today with a question. Now that question is, what is your three watch rotation? And actually we'll make it kind of a two part question. What is your actual three watch rotation? You know, like, what are the three watches in your collection that you wear for the occasions that I would say are the most common? And that's going to be kind of an everyday watch that's inexpensive, a watch that could be an everyday watch that's maybe a little more expensive, you know, a sporty watch, and then maybe a more eh, formal or professional or dressy watch that you don't wear as often. Um, and then the second part of the possible question is, you know, okay, so question one to reiterate, what is your current three three watch rotation and then what's your ideal you know what's your if i could have any three watch rotation what would it be um so you know that's sort of what i was thinking about today and uh you know let me preface this video by saying merry christmas and happy holidays and of course happy new years in a couple of days to everybody out there uh this is going to be my last video for the year so yeah i was just kind of musing over this question as to like what is my three watch rotation what do i basically wear all the time in these you know different scenarios and uh you know what if if i could have any three watches as my three watch rotation what would they be so you know sitting in front of us today is my i guess my actual three watch rotation of course i own a lot of other watches but these three watches here are the watches that represent or get the most wrist time out of my collection and you know real quickly i'll just point each one of them out i'm sure most people recognize all three of these they're all very popular watches number one we have the casio this is the dw 5600 g-shock and uh you know one of my very favorite watches uh number two is the seiko skx 007 and this is also well, this is sort of like a 2A and 2B, because I have the 007 here in front of you, which I do wear the most. But I also have the 009, which is the red and blue version. And then, uh, you know, number three is my Seiko Sarb 033. Uh, these are the three watches that, I don't know if I want to say I like the best in my collection, but I wear them the most. I mean, that's hard for me to pick, you know, a favorite, What which watches do I like the best. Um, but they get the most wrist time. Uh, so, you know, let me go over each one of them a little bit. I got the Casio here, and it's it's on a little stand because this bracelet or, or strap that it's on, you know, you can't uh, lay it flat. So let me pick it up and bring it up to the camera here. So this is the Casio DW5600. And for my money, the, one of the best watches you can get. It's, it's perfect, really. It really is perfect. Casio, when they created this watch, knocked it out of the park. It's comfortable, it's functional, it's durable, uh, you know, it's fantastic. It has lots of functionality. I'm not going to go into all of the specs and the features of all of these watches because I'm going to have individual reviews of each of these watches coming in the future. I have yet to review each of these watches individually. So, you know, keep an eye out for that after the first of the year. There's going to be reviews coming. But yeah, my first watch is the Casio G-Shock, the DW5600. This watch does not get the most wrist time in my collection. This is my quote-unquote beater watch. I, I don't really like using the term because I don't beat any of my watches, but this is my watch that I wear when I think there's going to be a higher propensity than normal for my watch to get subjected to uh, you know, abuse or harsh conditions or, or whatever. Like, uh, you know, I went and hit some golf balls the other day. I wore this watch. I'm not going to wear an automatic or mechanical watch when I'm going to hit golf balls. I know that uh, some watch brands claim, like, hey, no problem. Go hit golf balls with uh, with this watch on. It'll be fine. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and wear the Casio. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'm not going to be concerned about this watch at all. This watch is sub $50. I think when I bought it a couple months ago, it was $47 on Amazon. Uh, I just looked earlier today, as a matter of fact. It was below $40. I think it was $37.99. It was on sale, maybe post-holiday sale or something. Um, but so anyway, for let's just call it under 50 bucks. I don't know if there's a better watch on the market. Like, literally, click on the link in the uh, you know notes section below this video to Amazon and buy this watch if you don't own it already. It's like, there's no way you'll ever regret it. It's, in my opinion, one of the best watches ever made. 
Um, you know, it comes built built onto this this strap. It's uh, I don't know what they call it. It's kind of like this rubbery. I think they call it a resin or something. It's super comfortable. You know, it really is. I love I love the strap. Um, very very durable. Again, I don't want to go into all the specs on this watch. I <laughs> I don't want to get too specific. I got an individual review of all of these watches coming. But anyway, so this is my wear it any time watch, which ultimately means I'm not wearing it all the time. This one gets probably 25% of my wrist time, I would say. Maybe maybe 20. Yeah, maybe maybe 20. Um and you know, I love this watch, like I said. So going on to number 2 is the Seiko SKX007. And and this watch, I mean almost everybody's familiar with. You probably own one even if you have a really high-end collection. The 007 is an insanely popular watch. It's an automatic diver from Seiko in the $200 price range, you know, plus or minus. Um, it's not known to be the most accurate watch ever. It uses Seiko's 7S26 uh, movement, which is not hand winding and it's not hacking. It's an older design. It's been around for a while. And, uh, you know, this is what a lot of people say, like, oh, that's my beater watch. The Casio is my quote-unquote beater watch, like I already said. This is not a beater watch to me. This is 200 bucks, and I'm sorry, you know, I, I don't want to have to be able, you know, I don't want to have to admit this, but $200 is a lot of money to me, you know what I mean? It's not like, oh, I can't afford a $200 watch, but it's like, I don't want to abuse a $200 watch. I appreciate that this represents, uh, you know, a big chunk or... A big enough chunk that I care about it, uh, you know, piece of my uh, uh, weekly income. So I'm not going to, you know, th just abuse the heck out of a $200 watch. That's just me. That said, this watch does get probably, oh, I don't know, 70, 75% of my wrist time. And again, I said it was 2A and 2B. I have a 009, the red and blue version also. So sometimes I change them out, but we'll just consider it, you know, one watch, because aside from colors, they're identical. But yeah, this one probably gets about 70% of my wrist time. You know, I wear it almost, almost every day, most days anyway. And, you know, the uh, Casio gets about 20%. Um, so, so yeah, you know, it's a, it's, it's a really simple, but really attractive diver's watch. Again, it's not known to be the most accurate. The movement's not the best as far as accuracy is concerned, but it is supposedly very durable and, should go years and years and years and years without even needing servicing. Um, I mean, that's what people say. I don't know. I haven't had it that long. I've had it for a couple months. And, uh, you know, it's it's been great for me so far. The accuracy of it is actually way above average. I'm getting negative five seconds per day. I started up and synced it to my uh, my iPad stopwatch and... For five days, 120 hours, I was checking it every 24 hours, and it would just lose five seconds. You know, next day, it was five seconds slower. Next day, five seconds slower. So it was consistently losing five seconds a day, which is good. You know, consistency is key. It's, I mean, obviously, we want it to be accurate as well. And minus five seconds per day is not bad. But that it's consistent is, uh, you know, it's it's good to see that, th those results. Uh, I'm wearing it on a NATO. It's just a... Uh, black and gray NATO uh, from Clockwork Synergies. Uh, excellent, excellent straps. It's their um, their premium or their, 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 their second tier. They have two tiers, and uh, I forget the nomenclature that they use. I believe they call that the premium NATO. It's got some extra stitching and stuff. Um, so I wear this on the NATO, not the original Jubilee bracelet. I like the original Jubilee bracelet, though. Um, but I like with the watch that I'm wearing all the time, I'll swap out straps a lot. So, like, I'll go between this, maybe a just a solid black, you know, whatever. So, it's easier to just take it off the uh, the metal bracelet and, you know, run it this way, so to speak. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'm wearing most of the time. That's my number two watch in my, my daily. And then number three is, obviously, the last watch on the table. It's the Seiko Sarb 033. And this is kind of my dress watch or, you know, formal occasions, uh, professional watch if I'm wearing a collared shirt with sleeves, you know, stuff like that. When, when I have to wear something that fits under the cuff of a long sleeve shirt, you know, 
those kind of occasions. Now this watch probably only gets about well, 10% of my wrist time, I guess, if the Casio gets 20 and the uh, SKX gets uh, 70, you know, there's only 10% left. And these are just, you know, guesstimates. You can see I haven't worn it since, uh, what was that, Christmas Eve, the 24th. It's The, the watch died at, uh, I don't know, a little after 10 o'clock. So, uh, you know, I don't wear it super often. It's Actually, I probably wore it the day before. Actually, we had a a wedding to go for, go to. So yeah, it was probably you know on low power the day before, and I put it in the watch case and it's died, and I haven't I haven't put it on since. Um, but you know that's okay. Like I think we all need at least one watch that is just an occasion watch, and this is my occasion watch. And the occasion doesn't have to be super formal. You know, if I got a business meeting, or if I, you know, just want to dress a little nicer for whatever reason. This is the watch that I go to. Now, I keep this one on the metal bracelet, and the metal bracelet does leave a little to be desired. I'm not going to lie about that, particularly on the clasp. Um, but otherwise, you know, it's a really good watch. Accuracy, it's about as good, honestly, even though it's a much better movement, uh, supposedly. It's the 6R15 movement, but the accuracy is very similar to my SKX. It's It runs fast instead of slow. I think this one runs about 5 to 6 seconds fast per day. Again, very consistent, but um, you know, considering it's uh, supposed to be touted as one of their not high-end movements. I mean, you know, it's not a Grand Seiko movement, but uh, they have three movements in their lower budget watches, and this is kind of the the highest of those three movements. And accuracy is not awesome. You know, it's not like chronometer accuracy, but it's good enough. It keeps good time, plus five seconds, plus six seconds per day, something in that ballpark. Uh, but just a really attractive watch. I mean, most people know about this watch. You know, it's got a super nice polishing on the case. Uh, that The face of the dial is just very attractive. It's an excellent size. I mean, I'll do a little wrist shot with this watch. Um, you know, for me, that's just, just the perfect size. It's 38 millimeter case, 20 millimeter lugs. Um, you know, the only real downsides about this watch is, uh, now look at that, the movement started up from moving it around a little bit. <laughs> I must have had a little bit of juice left in it. Uh, but the only real downside is this this clasp on the uh, bracelet's not great. Lots of people complain about this gap that you get here. It's true, you get a gap there. But, I mean, it's it's solid, you know, it, it, it never comes loose or anything. So, so, yeah, that's my number three occasion watch, the Sarb. Zero zero, uh, zero three three, and uh, you know, just a a beautiful but affordable watch. I mean, you know, I don't know what the price range on this is around three fifty, three hundred fifty dollars US. Um, so you know, it's an affordable, uh, kind of dressy, kind of professional watch. I mean, it borders on sport watch. If you ask me, a lot of people will say like, "Is this a good alternative to the Rolex Explorer?" And I can see why you would ask that. I mean, I say, I mean, yes, it is a good alternative. But it's not a good analog. It's not a perfect analog anyway. I mean, the Explorer is a little more sporty, in my opinion. But, you know, it's got kind of that feel. Um, but, you know, regardless. So so that's my three, uh, my three everyday watches, or my, my, my three watch rotation, if you will. Now, I have other watches, again, you know, like... Uh, I don't know, I've got the Hamilton. I've got, I've got a number of other watches that... I do occasionally wear, but these are the ones that have been seeing the wrist time the most lately for whatever reason, and that'll change, and I'll get more watches, and I'll try more watches, you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to review something, I'm going to want to try it out, and use it for an extended period of time, so maybe the SKX doesn't get as much wrist time one one month or two, or maybe the SARB doesn't, or whatever. Um, but right now, this is what I've been using primarily as my three-watch rotation. Now, on to that second question. Uh, what I, which I asked earlier, what is your, I don't know, dream three watch rotation, your, your ideal, if, if money were no object or, or whatever, you know, I don't know, however you want to look at it. Um, for me, and, and it's funny, I got two Seikos and a Casio. For me, it would be two Rolexes and a Casio, and I'm sure you can guess which two Rolexes, and I'm sure you can guess which Casio. I mean, I'll, and the suspense right now, the Casio is going to be this one right here. It's going to be the G-Shock, the DW5600. I just don't think 
I would ever replace this watch. I think for its intended role in my life, in my system, whatever, it's perfect. I can't imagine ever not having this watch, you know, uh, a beach watch, a golfing watch, a uh, go to the gun range watch, a watch that I just don't care if it gets wet or if it gets shocked, you know, uh, gets dropped, gets abused, whatever. Like this is always going to be a watch in my collection, if not this specific one, because it gets damaged, you know, it'll get replaced is my point. Um, so this is, you know, going to always be one of my watches in my three watch rotation. So, you know, that is what it is. We don't have to dwell on that too much. My number two watch, the watch that would replace the SKX, would be a Rolex Submariner. I would love to have a sub, I think. And, you know, most people, I guess, probably agree with me. Most people think that that is the most attractive, the most iconic dive watch that's ever been made. I mean, it's been, it's been replicated. It's been... I don't know, I want to use the term knocked off, but, you know, homaged or whatever you want to say. It's, it's, there's so many watches that look like it because of what it is, because of how iconic that design is. It's literally almost perfect, I guess. I mean, I haven't spent a lot of time with that watch. I've gone to the authorized dealers and looked at them up close for a few minutes. So I guess I can't comment 100%. Is it really perfect? Are there any flaws? Is there anything about it that I wouldn't like? You know, I don't know. I don't have... $8,000 to buy a Rolex Submariner with. So when that day comes, I'll be sure to make a video about it and tell you. But until then, I can just look at pictures and watch other people's videos and kind of daydream about having a Submariner. But anyway, that would be my number two watch, my replacement watch for the SKX. And my number three watch would be the Rolex Explorer. And funny enough, we had just mentioned that a few minutes ago. Is the Rolex Explorer a good replacement for the Seiko Sarb? Again, I don't think it's a direct analog. It's not as dressy. It's not as formal looking. Um, but it has a very similar feel. Uh, the, the size, the bracelet, the black face. I mean, there's a lot of similarities just in feel, if, you know what I mean? I mean, there's there's a date on the Sarb. There's no date on the Explorer, obviously. But, um, so yeah, for me, I wouldn't I wouldn't say like, oh, I want an Explorer, so I'm going to get a Sarb. I didn't do that. I got the Sarb because I like the Sarb. I think it's a very attractive watch. And I recognize that the Explorer is not a quote-unquote dress watch. So, you know, the, that's not why I got the Sarb. It wasn't a replacement for that you know, it wasn't to fill that niche. But that said, if I was only going to have three watches and this watch was going to go, my third favorite watch, maybe it's my first favorite watch, I'm not doing this in any particular order, is the Rolex Explorer, the newest one, the 39 millimeter case Rolex Explorer. I think that watch is the most attractive watch that I've ever seen. Um, it's hands down my favorite. So if I was gonna replace this watch, you know, take it out of my collection and put anything I could think of in it, yeah, it would be the Explorer. Um, you know, again, that's a $6,000 watch, authorized dealer's price, right? 6500 and gray market, it's a little less, obviously. I, so obviously I haven't spent any time with it other than just drooling over it in the watch cases at the authorized dealer, but... Uh, you know, I expect that it's an excellent watch. I expect that the Submariner is an excellent watch. And I'm sure that I would be nothing but happy with either of, or both of them if I could have them. So, uh, yeah, that's my, you know, my dream three-watch rotation, at least right now. I'm sure down the line, as I discover new watch brands and new watch models, that could change because everyone's opinions and tastes change over time. But right now, you know, that would be my... If I could have anything, I suppose, you know, we could addend, uh, put an addendum on this to uh, a third question. What if you could only have one watch in your collection? What if you're, what if you had a quote unquote one watch rotation, what would it be? Obviously it's going to be one of the three aforementioned watches for me, either the Explorer or the Submariner. Um, probably not the G-Shock if I had to just live with one watch as much as I love it, you know? And I suppose if if we could sneak it in as only having two watches, the G-Shock would make the number two cut. But if I could only have one and not an actual three watch rotation, I think I would go for the Explorer 
over the Submariner. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't know why. I, I just think it's a little more refined looking. It's a little less look at me, look at me, stand out and scream at the world design. Everyone recognizes it. I mean, the Explorer is a Rolex. And if you care about that Rolex name, you get it. And, you know, I guess, do I care about that Rolex name? I don't know. Sure. Why not? I mean, I care about its quality. I know what the name means, right? It means quality and uh, precision and and all of the excellent features that come with every Rolex. So, so yeah, I mean, it's a Rolex. That's a plus. But again, it's not that... Uh, I can't think of the word I'm looking for. Not refined, but, uh, you know, it's just not as... Again, it just doesn't stand out as much as the sub. I love the sub, don't get me wrong. I think the sub's beautiful. But uh but yeah, if I could only go with one watch, that's it. I would go with the with the Rolex Explorer. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it a day again. Thank you for tuning in and uh happy holidays, uh belated. Happy New Year in a couple of days. So go ahead and tell me down in the comments what's your ideal and actual three watch rotations what you know what do you currently have and then if you could have anything what would that be i'd love to hear from you guys on that um these particular watches again like i said down in the comments i'm gonna have a link to the casio i'll have links to the other two as well if you don't own this g-shock just go buy it it's under 40 dollars right now you'll thank me later <laughs> so follow the link in the in the comments and as always, like and share this video. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. We'll have reviews of all three of these watches coming up in the new year, plus a lot more. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Bye.